Good morning. Good morning. So it's pouring with rain, so we thought, why not? Let's go away on another epic road trip. This time to Mull. The Isle of Mull. So we did try and book the ferry from Oban to Craig Newer mm -hmm. about a week ago, but the ferries are all booked. So we're going to attempt a slightly different way. Most of the Scottish Islands, there's more than one ferry, but not everybody realises that and they always go for the main ferry. Quite often there's smaller ferries, sometimes summer only, that you can basically turn up, wait your turn in the queue and they'll let you on. So we're going to make an attempt to go on that one. Uh, so we're going to head for a place called Lockline, which is on the Ardnamurkin Peninsula, and head over to Fishnish. Uh, but before we get to that, we need to try and get on the Corrin Ferry, which is also having issues. So if the Corrin Ferry doesn't let us on, we need to drive round the long way. And that's not a Kalmak Ferry. Either. No, so that's the council. It's not even as if it's all Kilmac, because there's a lot of issues with Kilmac ferries. Well, they're just busy. They're really just busy. The islands are popular. Yeah, the so. other thing you did is you tried for the car on the open ferry. Yeah. And it was sold out. Sold out for the car, it's sold out for sold the van. Out. So, yeah, so it's, it's busy. It's a school holidays. Uh, so it's busy. So we'll keep you updated. This could be a, an epic journey, or this could be an epic fail. <laughs> but one way or another, we shall let you know as we go uh, if we even make it to Mill. So we'll get there, I'm sure we'll get there, but we might not. <laughs> so we'll be where it'll be. Right, let's go. Yes. So we're, we're just driving along the, the bonny banks of Loch Lomond. It is torrential rain. Can, very misty out there, very poor visibility. I'm just trying to head up here. So yeah, typical Scottish summer, isn't it? <laughs> So we've stopped off in the, the village of Balahulish just after Glencoe and uh, came for a walk. The rain has stopped briefly and uh, so this is an old slate quarry. This is why Balahulish exists. The, the whole village was here to, to basically mine the slate out of here. And the slate from here left by boat and laterally left by rail and went to to, to roof the houses all over Scotland, England and Ireland. There's the shoes now. It's a fascinating place. Life was very hard here for the, the families who lived here. Very noisy, very dusty all the time. They were paid very little. Uh, their houses were owned by the by the, the quarry owners and as was the shop, so they had to pay whatever prices the, their employers basically charged them for food because there weren't crofts in Valahulish, there was crofts in Glencoe but of course the Glencoe had, had crofts so they could grow their own food They were so poor, they were so poor here that they had to get the salt and tick Yeah, so salt on credit, yeah, yeah. Get Scottish yeah. I think it's difficult to comprehend just how large this place is. It is absolutely enormous. And you think for about a century or so, this would have all been dug out by the locals with explosives and hand tools, and then the slate would have been carried down to the nearby loch um, and put on the boats and then latterly railways arrived to move it around. So just looking down towards Balahulish village there and then out onto Loch Leven and in the distance there you have the Balahulish bridge which you might just make out there. I think you can make the van out as well. The van's in... Ah, oh, there's the van. It's the point of the visitor centre. So it is. <laughs> like, where's Wally? Where's the van? Hey, van. <laughs> well... That's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> not a disaster, but... Not a disaster, but not ideal. Not unexpected, I suppose, not ideal. So we've driven to a place called the Corrin Ferry, which is just north of Balhulish, just south of Fort William. And 
it's a sort of five minute ferry crossing that takes you across to the Ambermarkin Peninsula. However, the ferry's off, the ferry's having problems today. So what that means is we need to now drive up to Fort William, up to the end of the hill and all the way back down the other side of the loch. It'll probably take us an hour, hour and a half just to do a journey that should have taken us five minutes. So it's ten past one just now so we'll soon see how, how long this takes. Yeah so this will be interesting. So let's it's ten past one and let's pick them up when we oh, yeah. get to the other side and then that'll help yeah. if the ferry's yeah. ever offer anybody to know how long that journey is. Yeah, it wasn't unexpected because the ferry's been having some difficulties and it was a replacement ferry that was in place. So it wasn't unexpected because it was a ferry and we're in Scotland. Yeah. And this summer's been a bit of a disaster for ferries in Scotland. Yeah, it's not always. Some of the ferries are having problems, so that is what it is. So yeah. we'll keep driving and we'll catch up soon. So we have arrived in Ardgower on the Ardnamurkin Peninsula. This journey has taken us an hour and a half uh, by road uh, because the ferry is out of action. The ferry's parked there. There's another one in the shipyards getting fixed. Fort William is over there. So what we should have done is we should have came from that slipway over there. In Corin, it'd have been five, ten minutes at the most, and we should have come off there. But instead we had to drive all the way to Fort William, to the top of Loch Linney, all the way to the end of Loch Hill, and then all the way down this road on single track road with passing places. So you can you can see why the, the ferries are absolutely vital to these communities, because there's just no other way around. I could have probably swam it quicker. Anyway, we're on this road now because we're going to head to Lochaline to catch the, the the next ferry to Mull and there's no there's no way to drive around here so we need to get on this one. So we'll jump in here and head off. So we've made it to Lochaline and this is what I call the back door into the, the Yellow Mill. Instead of going from Oban, which is the main ferry terminal uh, and you know really busy, really busy bookings and it takes about an hour on that ceiling. You can come down to, to here and it takes 20 minutes, it's just a longer drive but you don't even need to book, you just literally turn up, wait your turn in the queue and uh, jump over. There's our ferry coming now. We made it, we're on the, the ferry from Lochaline to Fishnish, which is on the Isle of Mull. So, as I said, we came in a strange way because the main ferry from Oban to Craig Newer on the island is booked. So this is a sort of back door way that you can sneak in. Do you like it on the back door? <laughs> we're on the ferry.
What'd you get? We got half pizza supper, didn't we? Let's see it then. So we got we have mini portion of fritters, which are potatoes. And then we both got this, which I've never had before, but you have. Which is half a battered pizza, which we didn't realise. And chips. We so thought that's half be interesting. pizza crunch was just a half pizza dipped in the, the thing, but it's been battered, so <laughs> uh, we'll try it anyway. We'll try it. There's not a great deal of choice in the LMO, so go for this. Yes, go for that. Myself wondering what did happen to the last ten. I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turned back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. Good morning. Good morning. From Calgary Bay on the Isle of Mull. Great night here. Yeah. Really, really good. Really peaceful. There was another one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, five or six ones. Mm -hmm. There's a little donation box here. You just stick your tenner in the little slot. It was quite full, actually. It was like trying to ram the thing <laughs> in. It was quite hard. So, pay their money. Uh, it's not very level, so bring ramps if you're going to stay here. You're right on the beach here. Uh, brilliant spot. Can't beat it. Uh, no TV, no 4G on Vodafone or O2 here, unfortunately. But uh, or phone signal. Or phone signal, <laughs> which is not maybe a bad thing. Great spot though. So we're just going to head south towards the Nova Ferry and down that direction now. I'm just sitting here. We're just getting ready to go, and I'm just watching this yellow van. Now the last night they pull this thing out for the back of the van, and they make their their dinner. It must have took them hours, and then this morning they're up and they're doing the same thing. Now, the weather's not brilliant here, it is Scotland. Yeah. Great spot, you're right on the beach, but to be honest, I just don't know if I could be bothered with the whole hassle of standing outside to cook. I'm just quite happy that we've got our, our facilities inside. Bear in mind, you don't even stand inside to cook. What do you cook? No, I went to the chip shop last night, but apart from that. <laughs> I'm the one that cooks. Oh, and Amy cooks. <laughs> anyway, right. Swiftly moving on. Excuse me, I'm looking for directions to Ulva. Can you help me? Amy. 
This looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah, Let's go up here. Can you hear the noise? Wait till you see this. True Scottish style. We went to a t-shirt, to jumpers, to jackets. <laughs> Torrential rain in about 10 minutes. It's oh. okay, we're out. We're out. We've got far to walk. <sighs> so we're parked down in where the, the car park is for the Ulva Ferry. So there's a big massive car park there, but they don't allow overnight parking. However, just down the hill here, there is dedicated overnight more home parking spots. I think I read online that it's, uh, in part for night, it's 21 quid. They've got electric hookup, they've got uh, water and a CDP point. So that's a great little spot there. I think it's only about maybe five or six vans. I'll have a wee look here. Three nights maximum stay. And I'm pretty sure the, the guy comes in the morning and... Uh, Takes your money. There's your your CDB point, so it's it's locked by the the mag lock. So I presume once you paid the man, he sort of opens it and lets you use it. What says there, sorry? To use, please call Mark on that number and then pay him £10. You can use that if you're needing to empty your toilet. That's what happens. You must release it somehow. It's perfect. Nice little spot. Much like a taxi, that's the Ulva ferry. That's the Ulva just there. It's literally what, two or three minutes across. Doesn't take very long at all. So, the, the, the way that you they call the guy is over here, there's a, a signal board, it's quite old fashioned, but doing it, but it works brilliant. So, just here, you move that door across and it, it becomes red, and then the guy across there can see that he's going to come over. Stop for snack. And with the fruit parcels, they're great. So, can't and they're vegan. vegan, but I'm not vegan. No. Can't eat my mouth shut my mouth. <laughs> Can't <laughs> talk my mouth full. We've parked up on the banks of Loch Na Loch Na Creel. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Old school. So we've parked up at the foot of Ben Moore on the banks of Loch Nakiel. So <laughs> I hope you don't show them that you actually just looked at my app. <laughs> I hope you don't cut that so you look like you're pure. I hope someone cut it. In the know, oh, where you're parking. There's a nice hill walk behind us there, but 
It's Scotland and it's the summer and it's torrential rain, so we're not going hill walking today. We've parked here before, many years ago, uh, before we had the camper van, we used to just go camping. And it's a nice spot, and you can remember the sheep bumping, bumping into us in the night. So, nice bit of water in front here, but it's just too wet today to even get out of the van, it's murder. Hopefully the weather will get better as the week goes on. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it? I'm going to go out in the Scottish summer. Come with me. I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, fuck it. You owe these people content. Oh, it's, it's wet. You owe them content. I'm doing it. I'm out. It's raining. We're outside. Look at the view. Oh, it's really, really rainy. Great pack up. A lot of sheep poo. Camera's wet. We're back. Nice spot. Ben more behind me. I'm going back in the van. Oh, it's too wet. But it's wild out there. We're back. <laughs> Let's go. So we've arrived on Fidden Farm campsite on the Isle of Mull and this is amazing, this campsite, what a place this is, it's lovely isn't it? It's lovely, it's really nice yeah. So Amy's just making some dinner, we're going to grab a bite to eat and then we'll go for a walk about the site and let you see it but let me just show you the view out the, out the van window, this is honestly amazing, we're right on the beach. So we'll go for a little walk after dinner and, uh, and let you see the rest of it. really bizarre. We're in a field at the end of a campsite on an island in Scotland and there's five Dutch registered cars just sitting in what appear to be abandoned in this field. How strange. Good morning. So we've woken up this morning at Fidden Farm campsite uh, at Fionport on the Isle of Mull. So we're just walking, it's about a mile and a bit, mile and a half or something from the campsite down to Fionport to the ferry terminal where we're going to get the ferry to Iona. And we're going to head over there for the day. So we'll let you see how this goes. Come with us. Come, come, come with us. So there's a bar and a restaurant. It's quite a small village. And then there's the ferry shop with the post office and arts and crafts. And then further down there is where the, the ferry leaves from. So you can park down here, but it's a pain display. If you just go five minutes up the hill, there's a big, massive free car park. You can park in all day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So there's ticket office for the ferry, there's toilets, there's a sort of cafe there, teas, coffee, soup, ice cream, and then when I say there's a, a seafood bar as well. And you're just down here on the subway to get the ferry over to Iona. But the other thing to do is there's boat trips over to Staffa. I just noticed at 10 o'clock, Amy, that's where that ferry was. That may be something interesting to do as well. There, you need to pay, it's 10 quid for an adult. Uh, it is, I don't know if it's cheaper or free if you're a member of the National Trust for Scotland, English Heritage, or one of these organisations. So there's several chapels here in Iona, isn't there? Yeah. For different saints. Yeah. Yeah, pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. Really peaceful, really nice. Mm -hmm. but just so many parts to the, the abbey and the different buildings. Uh, and this is where Christianity was sort of... What's the word for that? Created. It wasn't created, but... Oh. This is, spread his word from here. He spread his word from here. He landed here in Iona. And this is where he built and Christianity. spread Christianity around Britain, as it was. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 597, I think, he, he came here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, this is St Michael's Church. St Michael's St Michael's Chapel, Chapel we're in just now. So, it's, it's a very, very impressive place. That was brilliant. It's uh, it's worth paying the tenor to, to come in and have a look around. It's really quite something else, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So I think once we're finished here, we're going to pay a, a pilgrimage to <laughs> next door, which is the hotel, and see if we can get something to eat for lunch. Maybe soup and a sandwich? <laughs> That'll do.
So, unfortunately, this is the, the ugly side of Scotland on these islands. They've got nowhere uh, really to dispose of things as they should do. So the locals have got a tendency to dump stuff along the coasts. And what you can see here is old uh, axles off of cars. There's an old cast iron radiator down there. It's just ridiculous how they behave on these islands at times. And they just dump stuff at the beaches. It's absolutely treacherous down here. That, I mean, it's probably been dumped here many, many years ago. I mean, there's a cast iron radiator just there, you know. God knows how old that is. You've got all this really old looking sort of machinery. Just, it looks like an old cooker. This stuff isn't going anywhere. Clearly it's been here for decades, maybe longer. Looks like parts of an old engine there. An axle. There's more over there, look. I'm not even sure what that one is. It was made at Bamford's in Utoxeter. Whatever it is, maybe a gearbox? That's a proper old glass bottle. But you can see the waste. It's in the land. Glass bottles, bits of metal. Bits of everything. There's a, a washing up liquid bottle. I don't even recognise that brand. So, this section of coastline has clearly been used as some sort of landfill site way back, you know, I'm, I'm guessing 50, 60, 70 years ago or something, looking at the, the dates of some stuff on it. It's just terrible. They really need to try and clean their act up.